Does Feneroli expect you to do like um, Parma level manuscript realizations of the first one, or does he really want you to just play simple consonances in the first? I mean, does he expect you to be uh, like, do we go, come back after a few years of practice and really show off this Partimento? Or is there a certain limitation of the expectations of what the Partimento wants you to deliver? Excellent question. If you look at the first book, obviously those partimenti are n do not have the ambition um, to be basis of accomplished compositions. If you look at the first one, you get something very simple. Etc. 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 So there are only only quarter notes. Some 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 half notes and, and, and a whole note. So in general, you, you will not uh, uh, call this an accomplished uh, composition. But I've but seen it, but like, I've seen you and other people take something simple like this and make it like high mm -hmm. level, you know what I mean? Yes, but that is, that is also the, the versatility of, um, of the material. The, 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 the material allows to be flexible and versatile, depending on the level of the student also. Because when I, when I give this partimento, for instance, to three different, of, to the different students of mine, I will um, probably have three different realizations. When I have a, a student really starting out, I am very happy that he or she plays. <laughs> Which is not my sounds good ideal, to me. <laughs> but it's not ideal, ideal um, uh, artistically because it's quite vertical and there is not much attention going on uh, in 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 the realm of counterpoint. But perhaps I have a student that is uh, a student who is who is talented and who plays I don't know one day this version and then who wants to make it more accomplished. And then we could already go from four parts to three parts. Three part realization, which is, which allows much more, um, much more, more detail, much more um, attention going to the quality of each individual phrase. Instead of having, of repeating that G uh, thrice in the first bar. I could decide on putting a half note, a dotted half note, and having a horizontal ID, and then in three parts, with, for instance, in the middle part, then a uh, parallel third in the middle voice. I, when I play this, the G, I play the B on it. When I play the B in the bass, second beat, I play the D on it. Beautiful. Then that D will leap down to the A. That is my middle voice, my top voice. So I have three completely different gestures. I have my bass. I have my top voice. And I have my middle voice. Put together. So even when, as you see, the music l l seems to be extremely simple, you can give already so much atten attention. Good to me. <laughs> yeah. But this is this is really the, com the thinking as a composer right from the beginning. And then with the even with the with the better student, you could even go further. And you see that, for instance, there's a gap in between the first two notes. Perhaps um, uh, uh, triggering that student to fill in that gap and to play eight notes. Etc. Et everything, no. everything, everything starts just from that, from, 
from those basic rules that you have learned, simple ones, and that you start to open. But you always fall back, you always. You have the, you have the reflex of falling back on skeletal notes, on main notes. And you always have those uh, in front of your third eye. And then you can, you can develop that. You can play around with that. Okay, so I have a question. So we could spend forever on, on the first book, book one, book one. But my, my, my quick question is this. How many realizations should you exhaust before you go on to number two? Depends on the student. Also, I would say um, this is a this is a hugely important point. And colleagues of mine, uh, I know Peter van Tour also uh, spreads th this message. I spread this message wherever I can, whenever I can. The big difference between let's call it traditional uh, harmony and counterpoint, where you produce one version is that in Neapolitan and, and also in Bologna, in Italy, let's call it like that in general, <laughs> that you produce as many good solutions as you can. I have done the, the math. Um, I have been looking through the counterpoint books by a certain Biagio Musco Giuri, which is a counterpoint student of Finaroli um, in the beginning of the 80s, 1780s. And I have, I have notated how many versions of the Movimenti del Basso, of the Moti del Bassi, Masso, he, uh, he, he made. And there are Moti del, Bassi, Moto del Basso where there are more than 30, 30 versions of one stupid um, <laughs> base. So that is not always possible, of course, when you have a little, a little partimento like the one that we have here. But the idea is, I want, I, want to, I want to explore as many options as possible because I am, I am being trained as a composer. And as a composer, I have to be as versatile as possible.